All righty. So you sit back in your chair, you sip your drink, and you think, I'm having a great time here in Vegas. But then you start to worry. Some people seem to be getting very lucky in your craps game. How would you quickly and easily tell whether the dice being used were loaded? We'll give you that one more time. You sit back in your chair, sip your drink, and think, I'm having a great time here in Vegas. But then you start to worry. Some people seem to be getting very lucky in your craps game. How could you quickly and easily tell whether the dice being used were loaded? Huh. I have an idea of how you could tell, but I think, I, I don't know if it's right, but it could be close. So I'm just going to hang back for a second. All right. I mean, it could be, it's, it was quickly and easily, right? So you can't like roll them a hundred times. That whoever's, whoever's got the crooked dice is, is not going to let you roll them a hundred times to see if, if that works. Do we need to know the rules of craps here, Grady? I don't think so. Just that just the dice are the main okay. element of the game. So craps works by you have a big it, it's the one you see in movies where you've got that kind of big open table with the wall small wall around it and you roll the dice off the backboard and they kind of bounce around and you roll a either seven or snake eyes or something like that and, and either the crowd cheers or boos. You've got one person whose job it is for that round of the game to roll the dice and score for, uh, for everyone around the table. Are place. they a dealer? Are they employed by the no, casino? No, the, the dice rolling person is a civilian. Oh. On, on most casinos, they, they hand the dice over to that whoever. It really introduces more room for error, doesn't it? Yeah, but you've got, you've got to throw them well. well you've, got, you've got to bounce them off the backboard. You've got to actually send them all the way down. You can't... <laughs> you, you can't... This, is, this isn't just a maths thing, Grady. You can't just, like, total up how many times and, and do it. It's, it's no. quickly and easily. What would a casino give you that could happen? I mean, a lot of drinks. Um, if you're gambling, they just... What? <laughs> Put them in your That's drink? That's my idea. <laughs> I mean, someone's sipping a drink, right? So there's, like, a lot of liquid left in that glass. Wait, so if you would put... A- if you put the dice float. in, yes, but they'll float freely. And if they won't... they're not weighted, but if they have a weight in them, wouldn't they sink to the bottom of the drink? Or they'll always turn up the same numbers. Grady's nodding. Yep. <laughs> Vanessa's right. You got it. I thought that question <laughs> nice. was. I thought that question was um, was phrased very strangely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I made You're sure to mention you have a drink on your drink. <laughs> <And> then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, if yeah you, and if you're in vegas is. uh and you are gambling there are just people walking around just taking drinks orders and just giving you free drinks because <laughs> it is way cheaper for them to give out a bit of you know well vodka and some mixers and have people spend more money than it is to to make people go to the bar away from gambling so yeah like that's mm. that's a lovely question <laughs> i did a little research and it turns out that not all dice float and so a, a lot of people, as a quick check, they use like very salty water to make that's more dense. So to make sure that the dice will float. And if they're loaded, they'll turn to, to face a certain direction each time. Ooh. So, so where would uh, you put the weight? Like say you wanted the number six to always come up at the top. Where would you put the weight in the cube? Presumably on the one. Because all mm. the sides of a dice, like opposite, opposing yeah. sides of a dice always add up to seven. So I'm guessing mm. right. you want the six to come up. So you roll... The dice and, yeah, you put the weight in the one, I guess. Underneath the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I that mean, would make the most sense to me, but. And I think it has to be reasonably uh, noticeable just because there's a lot of, da- just from my D&D knowledge, um, there's a lot of uh, dice that have inserts in them um, and up up until a certain amount. So like someone, when they're making the dice and pouring in the resin or whatever, will add in like glitter or they'll add in little flowers or plastic things. Um but the idea is you'd have to put so much in there for it to actually make a difference to the rolls. So those are still dice you're allowed to play with. Like that isn't really a problem. So I think it would be so significant that it would be, like you said, like noticeable in the drink that it was kind of waiting to one side or it was kind of bobbing down. There, I know there are teams of people who've gone into casinos and like logged every number that's come up on a roulette wheel to see if there's any bias there. Because the house edge isn't just narrow enough that you've got enough of a biased wheel. You can just about eke out a profit on something like that. Um, I mean, I also know someone who went into Vegas card counting. If um, 
Yeah. Have you, have you ever seen Stephen? Was that profitable for them? Yeah. You know Stephen Bridges? Does anyone here mm-hmm. know? Yeah. He uh, is a magician and uh, joined a card counting team, learned to card count, took a load of casinos with a with the, some anonymous person bankrolling them and, and did end up making a profit and also wow. got banned from every casino in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took a hidden camera in for some of it. It's, it's lovely because he, he's got footage of bouncers kicking him out. And says, why? <laughs> we, we, just, we just think you're very good at this game and we, we don't want your business anymore. Like, oh, okay, right, mm-hmm. fine. I need it to be known that Tom uh, claims to be my friend and yet... Uh, we did play, did did take me in to play a game of what was essentially a bluff game <laughs> with with Stephen and also <laughs> someone who like professionally played poker. And I was like, I feel like I'm at a distinct disadvantage here, Tom. Yeah, uh, and you won. Yeah, I did. I, did. I played the the chaotic way of doing it where I simply didn't look at my own cards, and yeah. so n- they, no one they knew couldn't what my, read you. my you strategy were, was. You were unreadable because you weren't. You were just playing randomly. It was a great strategy. <laughs> So Vanessa was right. One way to very quickly and easily check if dice are loaded is to float them in a drink or in some liquid and see if one side always turns and faces upwards. 